Uh, my name is Janice Hazelcorn, and I lost my son, uh, Scott, who was 29 years old at 9-11. Uh, he uh, was a bond trader uh, with Cantor Fitzgerald. And um, as most people know, that mostly everybody, or everybody that was in that day was lost. When I first heard it, I said, this can't be possible, I mean, you know. Maybe it was a little plane that went into the building and he's okay. Um, I couldn't accept that it really happened. I think for most of us, even if we weren't directly involved, we, we had that, how could this be happening to us? I felt like I was in a different world, I felt like a, a different life. I didn't know who I was for a long time. Um, whose mother was I? You know, was I a mother to two children? Was I a mother to one child now? Shortly after 9-11, my husband, my other son Eric, and uh, a group of my friends and family got together and we decided that we wanted Scott's spirit to live on. And so we established the Scott Hazelcorn Children's Foundation. We started that foundation at his memorial service, uh, which was 10 days after. Scott had a dream. He had a dream of owning a camp with children of every background and learning from each other. We had a camp, Camp Hayes, running the first summer uh, after 9-11. Um, and we had children come up in limousines and we had children who never swam in a pool before. And we had a one week sleep away camp. And for my husband and for my son, um, I was very glad that we grieved together and we weren't in different directions with that. We were able to talk about him all the time. Um, I'm not uncomfortable talking about him. We think of people that have had losses uh, different, but we're not, we're all, we all have loss. We all have different kinds of loss. And, and it's how we choose to, to deal with the loss that gets us through this life. I choose to look at his life and see all the optimistic things, uh, attitudes, um, passion for life that he had, and I choose to live my life the same way that he did. I have to say, after 9-11, it was very interesting. Uh, I would go to social events, a wedding or a, an event for, for the foundation, and I felt when I walked into the room, I made people uncomfortable because of the loss, and they didn't know what to say to me, and they didn't know how I would react. And so I was very conscious about what do I do to make these people feel comfortable? Because if they're comfortable, I'll be comfortable. And so what I would do is walk up to them and say, I know it's really hard for you because you don't know what to say to me, and there are no magic words. Just either give me a hug or just say I'm so sorry and that's enough. And once I said that, it just cleared the air. They looked at me as, as if I was one of them instead of, you know, I don't want to be a member of this club. <laughs> you have no control over what happens to you, but you do have control over how you deal with it. I also learned that people grieve differently and that I cannot judge what somebody should or should not do. I can suggest um, and hope that it will make them feel better and, and move forward in their lives, but we're all different. We're all wired differently. It evolves. It doesn't, it's not an overnight thing. One day you say, wow, I made it through this week. I made it through this month. I made it through this year without him. And if I did it before, I could do it again. I uh, actually comforted myself with the fact that he's not here right now, but maybe one day I'll be with him again. And that they could take him from me, but they'll never take his memories from me. If you can, don't shut yourself off. Keep yourself open to what life has to offer. Don't separate yourself from your loved ones, your family and your friends. They are usually they're there for you unconditionally and let them do it because they need to do it as well as you need it. Find something that makes you feel good, even if it's for an hour a day. Get out there, volunteer. There's so much need out there. And you will see, I know it sounds kind of corny in that you get back more than you give, but it is true. 
And also think about how proud your loved one would be if you did something with your life even after they've been lost to you. That you didn't just cave and give in to the sadness um, that, and that grief that is, can take you over. Um, they, they want you to have a life. I'm sure if we had the power to speak to them, there's nobody there that would say, please, you know, give up on life because I'm not with you. I don't think anybody would want that. So make them proud.